Children of Morta is a delightful pixel art roguelite that blends aspects of Bastion, the Diablo games and Princess Mononoke into an impressively engaging story-driven action RPG. Join me for a quick tour of what to expect. If this is the first time on my channel, welcome or welcome. I am Steven Nansens, geek culture analyst, hack and slash extraordinaire and please don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy what follows. If you're already a subscriber, welcome back and remember to click that bell button, it really helps a lot. Children of Morta comes from a studio called Dead Mage, which props for that name to begin with, and started off by giving me a bit of a Bastion vibe, not in terms of art style mind you, more in terms of art direction, the scenery, the use of color, the controlling of one character and fighting stuff. The added fact that it has a low male voice narrating the proceedings only further disassociation in my head. But once you get into it, Children of Morta feels to me more like a faster and pixel art Diablo 2. The control is super smooth, you get very satisfying thuds when you hit enemies and combat is highly dynamic. Maybe the combat is more akin to Diablo 3, especially when you unlock the hand to hand melee character. But I get a more Diablo 2 vibe because you'll be spending the start of the game in some spider caverns that reminded me strongly of Act 3 of Diablo 2. Also you find obelisks that basically work like Diablo shrines. Then there's the music which is great and atmospheric, but especially while in the caverns it is very Diablo-esque, at least I think so. But besides these things, the rest of the game is pretty much nothing like any of the Diablo titles. It's centered around a family tasked for generations with the protection of an entire realm. You don't have an inventory, instead you gain and improve your character's abilities over time and it's a roguelite game that makes replaying the same areas not as much a grind for ever increasing powerful items, but something you actually want to do because of the very well crafted family mechanic. What's the family mechanic you ask? Well, as you play the game more, you start unlocking more members of the family that you can play as. These will basically be your character classes. You start with a slowish tank, then unlock an archer, then a fast rogue type character and so on and so forth. You never really die in the game, seeing as how when you reach 0 HP your characters are teleported back home, with all the things they found and collected in tow, so this means that you never really lose any progression in terms of neither character experience nor improving your gear and stats. What Children of Morta excels at though, is to make it very appealing to run the same areas with newly unlocked characters, because even though they will be of lower level, all the members of the family benefit from the individual advancement of each of them in turn. In each character's skill tree, most of the abilities that you will have to purchase are individual ones, but once you unlock new tiers, you automatically gain a family-wide buff. This makes it an actual good idea to try to level all the characters relatively at the same time in order to get as many overall benefits out of them as possible. But definitely worth getting as many of them to level 4 as quickly as possible since that's when the first family wide buffs activate. This mechanic allows you to experience several playstyles without having to start the game anew, which is something that we all had to contend with when we wanted to experience a new class in games like Diablo or World of Warcraft. You had to make another character or alt or tune or whatever you call them. There are a bunch of different types of temporary buffs that you'll find while adventuring through the game. And all of these will generally be super random drops, even though some will be specific to the class you're playing as. But overall they improve your character's stats or abilities tremendously. Some of them are one time use, some of them will be passive consumables and some will be on a cooldown. Generally they are all useful, but depending on the character that you're running, some of them can be very synergistic. For instance, making the fast characters faster will allow them to charge up their special abilities. Some of them will come with a little bit of a nerf alongside a buff, but sometimes you'll be lucky enough to find two bonuses whose disadvantages cancel each other out and you're left with two advantages. But there are also special consumables that allow you to respec your characters at any time. All of these extras make combat move much faster and look more dynamic because the animations of the various explosions and abilities are simply beautiful, which is in tone with the overall art direction. Children of Morta looks gorgeous, it's true that in the dungeons we get to see most of the same walls and stuff, but when you're between runs, the family house and its surroundings are quite stunning. 
and you get to see your home base quite often because at least at the beginning there is always something new happening in the house and the narrator describes what's going on as you see it play out. Basically every time any of your characters teleport home you advance the story and it is this focus on the story which allows you to immerse yourself deeper into Children of Morda than you might in some other roguelite. At least that's what it did for me. The threat and overall setting seem to be at least somewhat inspired by Princess Mononoke, with some mysterious black oily corruption taking over the lush and colorful nature. In this case, the corruption gains corporeal form in the shape of all manner of enemies, but most of the mobs that you'll encounter are of a much more traditional nature. The story makes it clear that this family has been tasked with fighting this corruption throughout the generations and that makes it into the mechanics as well. The more you use one character to run dungeons, the more they will suffer from corruption fatigue and have their performance lowered. So this is another way in which playing with all the characters in turn is incentivized, just in case the collective buffs weren't enough. Plus some bosses seem to be more vulnerable to some types of characters than others, so that's another reason to keep them all leveled up. So if it hasn't been clear by now, I am a big fan of Children of Morta as it stands now on release. Granted, haven't had enough time to finish it or anything like that, but I trust the experience stays pretty much the same. And alongside at the Gates and the Ratus, it made it on my list of titles that I will be returning to at a certain point. Also, another thing to keep in mind is that I play this on my computer on my own. And I imagine the game is that much cooler played in co-op on something like the Switch. So in case you're a Switch user, I imagine this would be a great game to add to your collection because you can play it in short bursts of 10 to 20 minutes and even if you don't reach a boss or defeat a boss, you're still left with your progression and you advance the story. I mean, I would definitely want this on my Switch if I were to have one. In conclusion, Children of Morda gets my nonsense seal of approval. If you're in the market for this sort of experience, you'll totally dig it. What do you think of Children of Morta though? Is this the type of title that you'd enjoy? Let me know in the comments. I have been Stephen Nonsense, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.